First task. Durmstrang guest sweets. Hey Harry. Harry had been busy finishing up his school work when he heard his friends barge into the guest suites. We're going down to the Black Lake for a quick run, you wanna join us? Not today guys, I'm a little busy. Emerald the cat leaned against his leg. Plus this little beauty. He stroked her ears. Doesn't want me to leave as I'm her pillow. They all laughed. All right well we'll see you at dinner then. Yeah. Tell you what I'll go on a morning run with you tomorrow before the task all right? Works for us, come on guys. They left him alone, and Demerald shifted a little against his leg. The first task was tomorrow, and while Victor spent a good deal of time training to fight the dragon, Harry still worried for him. He knew Victor would triumph, but against a full-grown, fire-breathing dragon it had to unnerve him. He thought about asking his mum about the victories, but didn't and figured if he did know he'd give it away. Victor was a great student and friend. He would not let the school down. Everyone was cheering for him, although some Hogwarts students were still a little out of there. Okay girl, I have to go out a little. Do you want to come? She yawned and rolled over onto the pillow. Suit yourself, lazy kitty. He put his books away and pulled on his uniform jacket. The cold weather was already here and about, yet his parka was nice and warm. The first task would come, and as far as Harry knew Victor's supporters besides his schoolmates would all be there. His parents would come, but they had business meetings though they promised to drop by around Christmas. Durmstrang would have Christmas at Hogwarts but some students were allowed to visit their families for the day unless they said otherwise. Harry knew this year Sirius had his own home, so he invited Harry and Charlotte to join him and Remus this year. And Victor too if he wished. Victor had not decided, but he said he would mention it to his parents. Potter. Harry stopped his walk when he heard someone call. He turned round and saw the last person he expected to approach him, Draco Malfoy. It's Priet now Malfoy, and I'm not in the mood for your insults today. I wanted to speak with you alone, if you're available. Malfoy you and I have a troubled past, why would I agree to this? Malfoy gave a small smirk. Because if you don't I'll keep pestering you until you do. Harry had to admit he was right, Malfoy had a stubborn streak that could rival Ron Weasley's. All right. You have ten minutes and keep your hands out of your pockets. Malfoy held up his hands and Harry followed him to an alcove. What is it you wish to talk about? Well for one dot I'd like to apologize for my behavior. He didn't expect that. I've been a complete git to you, and I'm sorry. All right dot why are you sorry? Is it because Snape is my bastard biological sperm donor? Malfoy glared at him. Don't give me that look, after what he said to me I will not call him my father. I don't blame you, but don't call him names in front of me. He is my godfather, and I know he regrets what he said. So he sent you to talk to me? Pathetic. Harry about walked away but Malfoy grabbed his sleeve. He didn't send me, he doesn't even know I'm here. And why should I trust you? You don't have to, just listen. I know he said some nasty things, hell I was angry at him for it myself. You can be angry at him all you want, but it won't change the fact that he is your dot sperm donor. He had no idea you were his, and he loved your mum but she loved Potter. I think he was just angry at them, not you. Doesn't change what he said. I know, but he's been torn over with it ever since you dot disappeared. I'm not asking or saying you should forgive him, hell I wouldn't and I haven't, but you could at least hear him out. Let him talk more, just dot take it slow and dry. Malfoy dot you are as delusional as him. I will not give him another chance, he blew it the first time and I won't give him the benefit of the doubt this time. You tell him this though dot if he truly wants to append for his words then he's gonna have to prove himself. How he'll do that? That's something he was to figure out. You dot you're willing to let him? Yeah, but I couldn't get his hopes up. Now if you'll excuse me, I'd like to finish my walk before my friends get back. 
He turned to leave. Oh yeah that reminds me Priyat dot nice job on that color curse thing. Harry smirked. I had nothing to do with that, but thank you. The curse still had not faded from the three guinea pigs, but at least this time the only color Ron had on was green, Ginny too, and Hermione was most of the time purple but there was no telling when the curse would wear off. Sometimes Harry saw they returned to their normal colors, but it didn't last very long. Now I just have to wait along until tomorrow. He walked away to continue his stroll, but he didn't get far as he spotted Victor coming up to him. The you are, shall we take a walk? I'm already walking. Harry laughed. Come with me then, we'll walk down to the lake. Victor. All right back to the sweets, I could use a break anyway. They walked hand in hand back towards their rooms, but they weren't going to be alone as Emerald jumped up into Harry's arms and took his attention away from Victor. Sorry love, but you'll have me tomorrow. The first task was going to be a hard one, a test of their courage perhaps against a beast. Harry only hoped Victor would get out unscathed. The next day. The day of the first task had everyone up and about, eager to watch the battle go underway. All the champions were prepping for the challenge, or they had been since that morning. The Booksbitten students seemed a bit worried for Fleur, but she didn't seem too bothered right now. Digri was nervous too, who wouldn't be? The Durmstrang students however acted like nothing was wrong, except for Harry when he sat next to his boyfriend at their table. Cheer up Harry. This'll be easy for our dear Victor. Nikolai clapped him on the back but Harry worried more. Hey mate dot don't worry it'll be fine. Guys you can reassure me all you want I'll still worry. Victor leaned in and kissed his cheek. Relax love, it'll be fine. The task was due to start in an hour, so everyone was eager and literally bouncing in their seats for it to start. Harry spotted Snape over at the teacher's table trying hard not to look his way but failing utterly. The sooner we get this done the better. Hey Harry is your mum coming? Yeah she's coming, but she's not going to show up until before the match starts. Harry leaned against the table. Uck dot take a look over there. Gerard pointed at the Gryffindor table and Harry spotted the coloured trio glaring their way. On three we all glare back, one dot two dot three. In a quick rush all eyes at the Durmstrang table fell on the group and they all bowed their heads to avoid further eye contact. Ha, that got him good. Thanks guys. Harry laughed. I think we ought to place bets, see who'll come out on top. Nikolai rubbed his hands greedily. I don't believe in gambling, my grandfather had a habit and he about lost everything. Victor waved his hand off. It won't be a lot mate. We'll just teach better galleon on who we believe will come out on top and whoever wins gets the gold. And if there are more contenders? Then we split it. No way my friend. Half the whole group shook their heads. Are you no fun? He sulked. Oh shut it. Harry nudged him and the rest of lunch continued though it didn't completely help. Once it was done everyone started heading down to the stadium. But Harry snuck away with Anton and Victor to provide moral support before the judges came. Inside already were Fleur and Cedric, both with Dumbledore and Madame Maxime but Harry paid them no mind. Hey Victor. Yeah Harry? I can't stay long, just wanted to tell you dot please don't get gilled. Victor smiled and kissed Harry's forehead. Fear not, I vow to make it out with at least my head intact. One quick laugh and Harry carefully snuck out of the tent just as he spotted the other judges coming in. This was going to be a tough one, but the other challenges would only get harder after this. Hey sweetie. He entered the stadium and spotted Charlotte. You alright? Fine, he's a little nervous but he won't admit it. He went with her to the stands and took his spot with his classmates. The arena was huge with rocks everywhere and Harry spotted a nest with a golden egg perched in the middle of a dragon nest. The challenge was for each champion to fight the dragon and collect the golden egg, and each one had a clue pertaining to the second task. Without the egg the second task would be difficult to face, 
so it was needed. Charlotte told Harry the dragons were foreign, each one strong enough to hold their own especially expecting mothers. Yeah this was not going to be easy to watch. It'll be alright, you'll see. She winked at him. Mum you just. He didn't get to finish as the cannon shot off, starting the first champion's challenge Cedric Diggory. Harry wanted to tone it all out until Victor came, but he couldn't because as soon as the guy stepped out and ran for the nest the dragon went nuts. A Swedish short snout he was fighting, and it was getting ugly as she stood protectively over her nest. Go Diggory. The crowds cheered heavily. Diggory was concentrating on the dragon, and he used his wand to turn a rock into a dog. The dog started barking, and the dragon stared at it giving Diggory enough time to make his way towards the nest. Go. Harry froze when the dragon turned her head and spotted Diggory. She gave off a loud roar and shot fire at him, and Diggory's face was burned on the left side. Giving just enough space Diggory made a jump and grabbed the golden egg, but quickly rushed off into the cave he appeared from. He passed. Charlotte whispered. They managed to put the dragon to sleep and levitate her away with the nest to make room for the next dragon. Moments later they brought in a Welsh green, and she was no happier than the previous one had been. Now we move on to Dot Fleur. The cannon went off again and Miss Delacour made her way out. She seemed calmer than before, and after the dragon spotted her she dodged the flames and used her wand to put the dragon to sleep. Whoa! She knew what to do immediately. Gespitans wasn't all prim and prissy like most believed. Fleur managed to get close enough to the nest, but the dragon snorted one jet of flame and her skirt caught fire. E -e. She about shrieked but put out the flames and grabbed the egg. Not even ten minutes into the match and she'd already passed. The dragon and her eggs were taken away, and out came the next one. She's good isn't she? Yeah, but Victor will be better. He said it with confidence, he knew Victor would triumph greatly. Charlotte gripped his arm slightly, and Victor came out wearing his red uniform, but his face was blank. He was up against a fierce dragon, a Chinese fireball. Eight tough species to fight with a killer fire blast. Don't let him get hurt please. He begged in his mind and after Victor was in the dragon's sight he started dodging every blast she sent his way. The rocks were getting charred easily, and Victor shot off a spell to at least stun her long enough to hide again. Go Victor! He heard Devon shout. Take IT down mate. Come on Victor! Harry shouted that time and right after he did Victor took one shot at the fireball's eyes and she was hit. Her eyes began to swell up and leak some icky yellow fluid, he'd used the conjunctivitis curse. It has to hurt. Charlotte winced. The dragon started smashing her feet around and right after Victor retrieved his egg the fireball's foot crushed two of her own eggs. That would definitely take off some points but at least Victor was unharmed. The judges took a few minutes to decide who was in which place, and the results came up. Victor Crumb had first place, Cedric Diggory placed second, and Fleur placed third. Durmstrang was in a happy uproar from their champion and Harry would be sure to give Victor a congratulatory snogging session later on this evening. All right dot Harry I need to go, I'll see you later all right? Harry hugged Charlotte and watched as she left the stadium before others began to leave as well. Outside the stadium, Charlotte headed back towards the path to Hogwarts, but right as she turned up near the humping willow tree she saw a dark shadow in her way. Snape. She knew he would be here. Might I ask why you're blocking my path? I wish to speak with you. His hands were out, but she knew he could easily get his wand in hand though she had no issues with beating him. If this involves you wanting to talk to Harry then you know my answer. Be glad. I wanted to talk to you, not him right now. She folded her arms over her chest. And what pray tell do you wish to talk to me about? I wanted to thank you. That took her off guard a little. To thank you for saving Harry's life. Given it some thought have you? I have, he would not be alive if it weren't for you. I wish I could redo it all, but all the while he's been around you he seems to be happy. 
Even with Crumb, he seems safer. While he appeared to be telling the truth, Charlotte's senses were going off. All right, what do you want? He stared at her. Want? You're thanking me and making me feel some pity for you, what is it you want? He sighed and looked around. I want to know Harry more, but I will not do it unless he gives me a chance. I will work my way up to help protect him even if from a distance, but I don't want to force him into anything. Again. His eyes closed in pain, holding back faint tears. Charlotte could sense his regret and pain, even if he was a master of Clumens, no one could fool her. Snape, I cannot deny that you are Harry's birth father, but you know that James Potter was for all intended purposes his dad. I don't know what James would say if he saw you now, but if you want my opinion. Then you need to know that there is a chance for you and Harry. A chance? He seemed a little hopeful. I cannot tell you when or how, but if you wish to gain Harry's forgiveness you'll have to work for it. If you wish to send him anything for Christmas then fine, but don't overstep your bounds. I won't, I've caused him enough pain as it is. I will not even ask him to call me his father, just to be in his life. Charlotte tried to look with her visions, but she came up blank dot again. Damn it. Something was blocking her visions, she couldn't figure out what. This hadn't ever happened in the past, so why was it now? Are you all right? Snape touched her arm which she pulled back. Fine. She stared into his eyes. Those deep onyx colored eyes full of unread emotions. She could see glimpses of his past, his thoughts going back, but right as he was nearly nose to nose with her she stepped back a few feet. I dot I need to go. She took off in a hurry, and when she made it back to the castle she turned around to see Snape walking towards the stadium where the crowds were coming out. She couldn't get the image of his eyes out of her head. It wouldn't go away. Why can't I see you? I'm glad you enjoyed the video. Before we close the video, I noticed 53% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. If you can, please subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell and leave a comment down below. Until next time, goodbye!